I understand that you will try to show this movie to a wider audience. Can you also tell us this plan? After uh, several more, there will probably be several more festivals and university screenings, but this movie is partially funded by public television in the United States. So public television helps us finish the movie and produce it, and in exchange, they have the right to show it on public television stations all over the United States. So we, it has not been scheduled yet, but we expect that sometime in 2011, the movie will be shown all across the United States, uh, and then we can start to distribute it in other countries of the world. Uh, and so we expect it to be shown on national television in numerous countries in the world, especially Europe, Australia, Japan, uh, countries which in many cases are major donors to Cambodia, Cambodian foreign aid. I'd like to show you another clip from which documentary that we uh, just saw uh, last night. <laughs> The two people, the two suspects in your movie that were put behind bar for a number of years and um, turned out to be someone that uh, advocacy group tried to say they were not guilty. Can you tell us a little bit about these two men? Uh, the two men that, are, that were arrested within a few days after the murder of Chia Vichia are, have, I think we show in the movie, and there's a lot of other evidence that proves quite clearly that they have nothing to do at all with the crime. In fact, there's no evidence against them. The only evidence that still exists against them is a forced confession that was later retracted by Bon Sam Nang. And the only evidence, and this evidence would not be legal in any normal country, uh, especially not to convict a second man on the basis only of one person's confession. But even outside from his forced confession, the fact that he was not in Phnom Penh at the time of the murder uh, really shows that he couldn't possibly have done it. Um, what we show in the movie really is exactly how these two particular men were selected. Even though they had nothing to do with the crime, there were reasons that they were selected. The reasons just had nothing to do with Chia or, or anything else, it was a matter of convenience for police to pick these two guys. And they didn't even bother to check whether those guys were in town at the time of the killing. So it created a, a long-term problem for the government, and the government still has not solved this problem. Now these two men are finally, after five years in prison, for a crime they had nothing to do with, they've been provisionally released. They are still under a guilty charge, but the Supreme Court of Cambodia allowed them to be released while instructing the Court of Appeals to try them another time, mm -hmm. saying, oh, there was something wrong with the way you did it before. You should change, you know, do a better job this time. The question is, so now, what is the appeals court going to do? If they retry the two men and they convict them, it will show once again how non-functional the Cambodian courts are. Everybody will know that they are reconvicting two innocent men. If they try them and find them not guilty and clear them, then the government will be right back to the position it was one day after the killing. Mm. We didn't find the killers. We failed to find the killers. And it will be clear why they failed to fi find the killers, because they never looked.
for the killers. They immediately looked for two guys who didn't do it. And then, since then, they have focused 100% of their attention on two guys who have nothing to do with it. Of course they didn't find the real killers. Yeah, I saw that there, are kind of, there were attempts to show the linkage between the, the, the general who was in charge of the investigation to his boss and to another level. But the movie stopped short of identifying, uh, going into deeper into who is really behind the killing. So what, what was the reason uh, that stopped you from doing that? Well, I should be clear about one of our approaches in the movie. And it's that what we show in the movie are absolute facts. We do not make up theories and make conclusions and accuse people without factual evidence. So we take the facts that we've collected, and we collected a lot of facts, and we take the most important ones and we put them together in a logical way and present them to the viewer. So the viewer can look at the same facts and arrive at any conclusions that the viewer wants to arrive at. We don't jump to a conclusion. We show what we know and know more than what we know. We've just talked to Rich Garela, producer of Who Killed GBG. Thank you very much, Rich, for coming to VOA Studio to talk to us about your movie. Thank you very much. I enjoyed it. Thank you.